Okay, we were on the strange woman talking about the strange woman and today we'll be talking about uh, We're going to part two because the video uh, The video didn't turn out so great Video got uh, something went wrong with my camera, my other GoPro. Um, so we got uh, a new GoPro here. And we're talking about the great darkness soon will soon come over the world. If you're not in the light, you'll be lost forever. In John 12 46, it says, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Of course, you don't abide in darkness, but that doesn't mean that darkness isn't around God. God always has a cloud of darkness around him. And when he created the heaven and the earth, there was a cloud of darkness there too, which we're going to be studying in a, a later study. We go out into the wilderness on whether the is an old earth or a young earth. A young earth would be a 6,000-year-old earth. And... Uh, uh, of course, a lot of people teach a gap theory between Genesis 1 and 2, which could have been many, many years. Don't be putting gaps uh, between, between days. That, that's just calling God a liar, because all through the scriptures, he talked about how he created the earth in six, six days, six literal days. And so we've got to be real careful there, and especially pastors teaching this, because they've listened to other men. That's right. They're following the traditions of man, and they'll put up all these Clarence Larkin and 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 and, and all these different names. And I'm not going to name all these, but you can make a list. These are the guys. If you listen to any of those men, you heard the gap. Now just look at that, and I'm telling you, that's fundamentalist Christianity in America up until the last couple of decades. These were the men that God raised up. These were the leaders of the Church of Jesus Christ in the United States of America and around the world. And they all teach the gap. And even their churches that they pastored have abandoned their Bible and their doctrine. But we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that in a future study. Anyhow, then we go to over to Proverbs 14. Who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they froward in their paths. Crooked? Funny, Isaiah 27, 1 says, In that day the Lord with his sore, a great and strong word, shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. It's funny now, the new Bibles change this uh, crooked, to twisting or coiling. Isn't that very interesting? Because that's exactly what a serpent does. He twists and coils. And they teach serpent seed and, uh, uh, of course, a strange woman. You know, even some King James Bible Church pastors uh, will lead you uh, and direct you to the Schofield Study Bible. But uh, I don't know how many know that, but the Schofield Study Bible is Schofield is the one that came up with the Shekinah name.
And, and it's funny because Shekinah is a Fenomen God, and it's mentioned seven times in Schofield's Bible. Why would he mention Shekinah seven times, which is a female goddess? I think uh, Schofield was seduced by, uh, by this goddess spirit. When he was studying, he just, uh, he just uh, strayed away from the word of the Lord with all his notes. I'd stay away from Schofield. I'd be very careful with that one. So these churches that will tell you, they're going to tell you, today the churches will tell you what you want to hear. How rich you will become, positive thoughts, no hell. They don't teach about hell anymore. Uh, uh, they're not teaching you the truth, they're flattering you. They, they're asking to be slain in the spirit. You know, come on, come on up here, get slain in the spirit. It's so wonderful. Watch these people flopping around on the ground. Falling back, that's just falling back, saints. Don't be falling back to being slain in the spirit. It's accepting the strange woman being flattered with her words from the modern pulpits. They tell you it is an awakening, but put you to sleep. We have, you know, we have actually, we have family members that argue with me over this. They say that when I warn them on this, oh, it can't be, it cannot be true that that slain in the spirit is bad because it's real. I even saw my grandma fall back. You know, I had one, one, one particular uh, nephew, he's going to seminary college and, and he told me this going to seminary college and he's letting his grandma fall back boy i hope they didn't make my mom fall back <laughs> which you now see and hear they heard them speak in tongue but what did they see for them to think they was drunk they must have thought they was drunk. They were acting like drunks. Their roaring shall be like a roaring, and they shall roar like young lions. Their roaring shall be like a lion, they shall roar like young lions. And in that day, they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold, darkness the Lord, the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhibited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Inhabited, I'm sorry, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon, and we're talking about spiritual Babylon as well as literal Babylon, shall be astonished and hiss at all. Yeah, that's the reason it's going to happen in, 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 in October because that's St. Louis. That's the center and the heart of the nation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, my. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh 
Oh my. Yeah, yeah, it'll spread. Yeah, it'll spread. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> spread all over the nation. Now walk in reverence before me, saith the Lord. Respond unto the call of God. Respond unto those whom I put in position of leadership. Respond unto the prophet. And so thou shalt see the glory of God upon thee, upon thy family, upon thy loved ones, upon those around about you, and the blessings shall flow like the rivers of living water. He wants to manifest his, pow his presence in his power to us. See, God wants us to realize that the Holy Spirit is what we need to sustain our life. That cloud of fire uh, and that cloud of, of well, they, they call it the Shekinah glory cloud. It's, it's a dazzling, if you, you know, go read from the different uh, people that talk about that and try to get a, uh, you know, the different historians and theologians and people that read they, they The well, only way that it's really been able to, to be described is a cloud that is dazzling white, more dazzling than, than the sun shining on the snow. It's uh, actually, there's hardly any words in, in articulate speech that can really describe that glory cloud. So, uh, and if it's not Schofield, then it's tongues slain in the spirit. If we go to the book of 1 Samuel, go to the book of 1 Samuel, uh, 2620, 2620, is, uh, now then, do not let my blood fall to the ground away from the presence of the Lord, for the king of Israel has come out to search for a single flea just as one hunts a partridge in the mountains. Isn't that interesting? The king of Israel is coming to search for a single flea? And we think that we can get away with some of the stuff we're doing, especially in the modern churches today? Then if we go to the book of Proverbs 2.17, which forsaketh the guide of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. Well, isn't that interesting, too? She forgetteth the covenant of her, of her God. If you're going into slain of the Spirit, speaking in, in these false tongues from the pit of hell, and doing these weird things in these churches today, have you not strayed from the truth? Come on, 
Aren't you forgetting the covenant of her God? Just like this strange woman? Yeah, she's a strange woman, all right. You have to pay for something, perform to get something from their God? That's what you're doing in these new modern churches. They're serving you new gods. Gods that our fathers knew not. Or you repeat sayings, you have to utter and repeat sayings, like repetitive words in songs, or, or they get you to, to mumble in this tongue language repetitively. You know, the, that, what is she actually teaching you? She's teaching you Baal worship, and they call her Jesus? you got to be kidding me. Okay, let's go to Proverbs 2.18. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths lead, and her paths unto death. You want to stay away from this strange woman, friends. Stay completely away from her. Get out of the new church buildings. Get out of the new church buildings. They're just going to teach you evil. So, and then we're going to go to Proverbs verse 19. None that goeth unto her returneth again. Neither take they hold, take they hold of the paths of life. If you don't have the path of life, guess what? You're going into the pit. You're going to go right into hell. The paths are in this book. This book, yes. The paths are in this a, a king, a new, a, a authorized King James Bible. You know, she hates the Bible. That's right, that whore hates the Bible. That's why she keeps going in, into experiences. Tongue, slain in the spirit, seed, seed money giving. Hey, the seed is not money. The seed is the word, friends. Teaching you to show off. Yeah, we've been in churches, they tell you. Oh, you got to show off for Jesus. Yeah, right, you got to show off all right. That's why you got to preach the prosperity gospel. <coughs> I'm going to let you hear one of these wicked men. a London Lojos. They're drawing you away from this book, friends. This book. You will be offered numerous activities during the week in these church buildings to take you away from studying this book on your own. So let's go to verse 20. Proverbs uh, uh, number 20. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. You got to keep the paths of the righteous. The paths of the righteous are all in this book. All 66 of them. So why doesn't, why, why don't these new churches want you studying these paths? Because wisdom and understanding comes from counting things. Like in Psalms 23, if we go to Psalms 23, uh, I'll, I'll read it for you. There's exactly 66 words in Psalm 23, 66 words. And that's very interesting. Why would there be 66 words in Psalms 23? Psalms 23, we should know it by heart. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But anyhow, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures. He, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of, shadow, of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Okay, now we're going to go over to Proverbs 5. Proverbs 5, and we're going to look at something from there. Is my son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, and thou, that thou mayest regard discretion, and thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb. Notice it says as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Out of her lips come false words, friends, false words. She's a vine of Sodom. And that honeycomb is not honeycomb. I know, I, I harvest honeycomb, and I've eaten honeycomb, and it's very sweet. But it says her lips are as a honeycomb. That's not a honeycomb, it's a false honeycomb. These bees are really angry that we've taken their honey. These bees are serious. Absolutely serious. I only took 20 to 30 percent of the honey. Very angry. These killer bees just cover your body and kill you. But you see, nothing compared to what's inside the wall. Covered. God's words taste like honeycomb. Oh, and that's in Proverbs 24, 13, and 14. Is my son, eat thou honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul when thou hast found it. Then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. So we find it when we read it right here in God's Word. That's where we find it. And we go to Psalms 149.6. Let's go to Psalms 149.6. Psalms 149.6. <coughs> Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand. So who is the two-edged sword? Huh. That's, that'll be, let's find out who the two-edged sword is. That'll be in Hebrews. Hebrews 4.12. Let's go to Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Hebrews 4, verse 12 is, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay, we're going back to Proverbs 5 now. Proverbs 5, verse 5. Proverbs 5, verse 5. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Yes, all the new churches are slaying you in the spirit. You're falling down. Don't go down, guys. Stay up. Stand. Stand strong. Stand on the word of God. Verse 6. Least thou shouldest ponder the paths of life. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Now, every time a new Bible version comes out, they need to revise it again and again. They move, they move her words. That's the horror. They, they move her words. And verse 7 is, Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. You don't want to part from the words of God's mouth. That's right here in the King James Bible. Stay away from the new versions. So where are the words of God's mouth? Right here, of course. Verse 8. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh to the door of her house. Least thou not give thine honor unto others, and thy years to the cruel. That's right, you're going to end up supporting the cruel, and giving your wealth to, 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 to the wicked. And you, you don't want to be doing that. You want to follow God's word, stand strong, stay in his word. <clears throat> Verse 10, least the stranger be filled with thy wealth, 
and the laborers be in the house of a thy laborers be in the house of a stranger. So if you start giving your tithes and offerings to these, the a lot of these, most of these church and and and, and apostles in their buildings, they will keep asking more and more. So you fill them with your wealth. Don't understand, it's complete deception, it's divining. They're diviners, they're divining your money. And then verse 11, And thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof. Instruction out of new Bible version. Stay away from them. <coughs> Your reproof is right here in the King James Bible. If we go to Timothy, go to 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16. Let's go there. 2 Timothy 3.16. First Timothy, 2 Timothy. Three sixteen. 15, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And verse 17 is, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's right. So if a man doesn't have God's words, these words, the authorized King James Bible, he doesn't have anything. He's not a man of God. Don't you listen to these people. Don't you listen to these people. They're deceiving you. And say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof? Okay, verse 13. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ears to them that instructed me. Instruction is from this book. People that believe every word of this book. <clears throat> that's who you listen to. That's who you follow. That's who you start. Then you start, you, you become a teacher yourself. God just puts a spirit into you from this book. Not another spirit from another Bible. A so-called Bible, which are just books. Verse 14. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. They hate this book. In new church buildings, congregations, and assemblies, they hate the King James Bible. Verse 15. Drink waters out of thine own cistern. That's exactly what they're doing. Because those books just teach them to love themselves. And running waters out of thine own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad. And rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own. And not a stranger's with thee. Trust this. This book. Not a stranger. Not a new God version. New gods. Gods your fathers knew not. So let thy fountain be blessed. And rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as a loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. And be thou ravished always with her love. So the milk and love we get from this book can be found in no other, friends. Verse 20. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? That would be like an NAIV, NASB, ESV, New King James Bible. These guys all want you to have this peace greetings and, and, and peace offerings and you go and hug and shake each other's hand when you go in the building. It did not in the book of Timothy did Paul not warn us to not to lay our hands suddenly on no man. Let we go into a church building. We don't even know what their doctrine is. We start shaking everyone's hand. We don't do that. Not, 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 not as what's supposed to be a house of, of the Lord. My goodness. Uh, verse 21. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord. And he pondereth all his goings. That's right. Every going that we do, the Lord is pondering. He pondereth. Therefore, therefore, you better be real careful with, with, with which, which Bible you're serving. Verse 22. His, his own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. He shall die without instruction. And the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. No, there's no instruction in new Bibles. It's, it's, it's been taken out, just like Lucifer in Isaiah 14, 12 has been taken out. <coughs> and uh, over in, uh, in uh, uh, Daniel 3, 25, Daniel 3, 25, they changed the Son of God into a Son of the Gods. Can you imagine? You're serving Thor then. The God of your Bible is Thor or, or Hercules. Are you kidding me? 
Come on, guys, wake up. If, if your Daniel 3.25 says anything else but the fourth being like the Son of God, then, then chuck it, burn it, burn those Bibles. Okay, and Isaiah 14, 12, must say Lucifer, not the morning star or day star. Burn that Bible. It teaches you another God is swapping Lucifer for Jesus Christ. How will you ever know the truth? Okay, so uh, please, guys, don't die. Don't die. And you might die just suddenly without this instruction from this book in your hearts. Amen. Praise God. into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.